our title today is Hess's Law. Today we're going to talk about another way to find uh, the change in heat of reaction, or the enthalpy of reaction, or the heat of reaction, or the change in enthalpy, or the delta H of a reaction. Okay, so we used a method yesterday uh, that was utilizing standard heats of formation to determine the change in heat that is associated with a chemical reaction. Uh, the second way that we are going to learn to determine delta H for a particular reaction is something called Hess's Law. Okay, so the change in enthalpy takes place in one step or a series of steps. Okay, so this is Hess's law right here. So it's this idea that will allow us to use the method um, that we're going to look at today. All right, so let's look at a reaction. Um, we've got nitrogen gas plus two moles of oxygen gas react to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so one mole of nitrogen reacts with two moles of oxygen to give us two moles of nitrogen dioxide. And the heat associated with this reaction, um, delta H, is equal to 68 kilojoules. Endo or exothermic. Endo. Delta H is positive. Endo. Okay. Um, in reality, this reaction occurs in two steps. Up to this point, we have been under the illusion that we've just got a nitrogen molecule reacting with two oxygen molecules to give us this product. But in reality, this thing occurs in two steps. This balanced equation shows us the overall net reaction. But it doesn't tell us anything, or it doesn't tell us what happens in between. This particular reaction takes place in two separate steps. And so, um, I am going to write those two steps here so that you can see this. All right, so what actually happens to get to our product is one of the nitrogens, I'm going to do it in a different color. You may not be able to see that it's a different color, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, one of the nitrogens reacts with one of the oxygens and that is going to form two moles of nitrogen monoxide. And the change in heat associated with this reaction is 180 kilojoules. Okay, as well endothermic. Okay. This is called an elementary step of the reaction. Okay, 
so, so far we've made two nitrogen monoxides, and now what we're going to do, what happens is that the other oxygen, right, because this takes two moles of oxygen, and in this step we're only using one mole of it, so we're going to get those two moles of NO, nitrogen monoxide, and they are going to react with another molecule of oxygen to give us the two nitrogen dioxides. Okay, so these are the two elementary steps that occur. Step one, and then with the product of step one, okay, that product of step one then is utilized in step two to make our final overall product. By the way, we call this, and we'll talk about this um, later on in the year, but I'm just going to throw out the word. Um, we call this nitrogen monoxide, we call it an intermediate because it is produced and then consumed within, we say that this is the mechanism of the reaction, and it doesn't appear in the overall balanced equation because it gets produced and then consumed within it. Okay, so here the second step, we've got a change in heat for that as well. And the change in heat for this step is negative 112 kJ. All right, so this is an exothermic step. This is an exothermic reaction. Now, if we summed these things up, okay, we, we add up everything in our mechanism on the reaction side, we're going to have N2 plus O2 plus 2NO plus another O2. And that gives us, and then we're going to sum those two things, 2NO plus 2NO2. All right, and if we've got this thing set up correctly, we should be able to cancel things out. It's sort of like spectator on but we call them intermediates when we're talking about steps of a mechanism. Um, we can cross this 2NO and this 2NO, and what do we end up with in the end? We end up with N2 plus 2O2s to give us 2NO2s. And if we have set this thing up correctly, and you'll see what we're going to do, you guys, is really like a puzzle. Um, then we should end up with the overall balanced equation. And then if we add these up and end up with the overall balanced equation, what that tells us then is that we add these up. And if we add these up, what we should find, and we do, is that we get the overall value. Or the change in heat of the overall reaction. So the sum of the elementary steps and their delta H's is going to give us the overall delta H reaction. Okay, so let's see what a problem would look like. <clears throat> but first of all, we've got a couple of rules that we always have to follow when we're doing these kinds of problems. I'm going to put those rules up on the board. If a reaction is reversed, the sign of delta H is also reversed. number one that we must abide by by getting things set up in order to solve using Hess's law. Okay, and the second guideline that we cannot break, uh, the parameters that we have to follow, the rules of this particular game, um, is if the coefficients in a balance 
Bounce reaction. R multiplied by an integer delta H is also multiplied. So the enthalpy of combustion for graphite is negative 394 kJ. And diamond which is negative 396 kJ. Calculate delta H. So, in the end, you guys, this is what we want. We want graphite to diamond. And we are going to use the heat of combustion of graphite and the heat of combustion of diamond to figure that thing. Graphite, carbon in the form of graphite, two carbon in the form of diamond. Okay, and I think it's time to start abbreviating these. So I'm going to just call this C sub G and C sub D. We'll know what that means. Okay, so we have enthalpies of combustion. Uh, so what the heck does that mean? Well, combustion is always reacting with what? oxygen. So, let's say we've got carbon graphite and it's going to undergo combustion to give us carbon dioxide. Okay, and um, 
what did it tell us that the enthalpy of combustion for this was? So, for graphite, it was delta H, negative 394 kJ. Okay, the enthalpy of combustion. So don't let it scare you. Okay, and we know that the enthalpy of combustion for diamond, C for diamond, plus oxygen, and that gives us CO2 gas. That heat of combustion is negative 396 kJ. Okay, so using this data, and you guys, you're always going to get the reactions written out for you on the problem. You're not going to get something nebulous and then have to convert it into here. Okay, um, so using these two pieces of information, we are going to figure out the overall delta H. That's what we're trying to find here, the overall delta H. going from graphite to diamond. Okay, so I've got these two reactions that I've got to, I've got these two equations that I have to manipulate to get here. Now, of course, this is going to be a really easy example, and the ones that you're going to do tomorrow in class are not going to be this easy. Um, okay, so in the end, We've got to have graphite as a reactant and diamond as a product. Ooh, look, in our first reaction, we have graphite as a reactant. So we can just leave this one alone because my reactant is where it's supposed to be. Oh, but look at the second one. We have diamond as a reactant, and we want diamond as what? A product. So, in order to be able to add this all together and cancel everything out and end up getting this as our sum, what are we going to have to do with this reaction, this equation? We are going to have to reverse it in our game that we're playing called Hess's Law. Okay, so what we're going to do we're going to say carbon dioxide gives me O2 plus carbon in the form of diamond. But if I reverse this reaction, what do I have to do to the sign of delta? Oh, look how easy this one is now. So if I sum these two together, oh, I should have followed the same legend as I had before. I should have made that blue. If I sum these together, you guys, so everything on my reactant side, I've got C in the form of graphite, and I've got an oxygen, and I have a carbon dioxide. And in my product side, I have another carbon dioxide. I should gas, 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 gas. This will be important, you'll see in some problems. Gas, gas. Okay, so carbon dioxide plus O2 gas plus my other product, carbon, in the form of diamond. All right, so can I cancel them? Can I cancel out everything and get my overall? That doesn't cancel, but I've got an oxygen that cancels with an oxygen, identical on both sides. I have carbon dioxide that cancels with a carbon dioxide. And look what it leaves me with, what I want, which is carbon in the form of graphite going to carbon in the form of diamond. Okay, so if I add these
bodies together, I'm going to get an overall what? I'm going to get a delta H that is overall positive 2 kilojoules. Delta H. So, my overall change in heat is 2 kilojoules. Alright, and what does that tell me? Oh, that tells me that this is what? Endothermic or exothermic? This thing is endothermic. Alright, now what we didn't have to do in this particular case is we didn't have to multiply through by an integer. So let's say that down here we add, we add our things up, but things don't cancel because, oh, just for instance, we needed to multiply, we needed to get a, a coefficient of 2 on here, on these, in order to get them to cancel. So the thing is, is that if we multiply all of this by 2, that means, in the end, you guys, we don't have to for this problem. Did, right? And so if we multiply this whole thing through by 2, giving this a coefficient of 2, this a coefficient of 2, this a coefficient of 2, we would also have to 